So let's say you have an image, logo, texture, or even a video, and you want to add it on your 3D model, but you don't know how. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can take any image or any logo, and I'm gonna also show you how we can combine it with different materials. So this is the object that I'll be using as an example for this video. You can see that it is just a blank hoodie with no logo, and it only has a fabric material applied. And this is the logo that I'm gonna be adding to the hoodie. Now before we start, I just want to clarify that the video is not sponsored. I'm just using this logo because it's popular and because I like the brand. I'm gonna show you two ways that we can overlay any texture or apply any logo to the hoodie. The first one will be that the logo will be only overlaid on the texture, which means that the logo will be using the same material as the hoodie. And for the second method, I'm gonna show you how we can add the logo to the hoodie, plus how we can add its own separate material. So first of all, let's go to the shader editor. Here you can see that this is the current fabric material which is applied on the hoodie right now. And what we want to do for the first method is that we want to maintain all the fabric maps, but we want to combine the logo with the base color. So let's add image texture. And now let's locate the logo. So now we have the logo, but there are a couple of issues that we need to solve first. The first issue is that the logo is too small and it's repeating across the whole material, which basically creates this pattern, which is covering the whole hoodie. So to fix this, we can switch the extension to clip. So we have the image texture only once, and it's not repeating. But as you can see, the logo is still very small, and it's located on the hoodie, which is not where we want it, since I want to place the logo on the chest. So how we can fix this? Basically, we need to create a separate UV map for the logo, because right now the logo is using the same UV map as the fabric texture. And if we use the same UV map for the logo and for the material, then we would face some scaling issues. So to create a separate UV map, we need to go to the object data properties. And in the UV map settings, you can see that now we have one UV map, which is now controlling the fabric material. So let's create a new UV map by clicking on this plus icon. And let's give it a proper name, so we can easily recognize them. Also make it active render by clicking on this icon. And now we can go to edit mode and we can select the area where we want the logo to be located. So I'm gonna select this chest area and now I'm gonna press U on the keyboard and I'm gonna unwrap this area by using the angle based method. But now before we move forward, we need to basically address each UV map to a certain image texture. Because now if you take a look on the material, you can see that the textures from the fabric materials are using a UV map but the problem with this texture coordinate node is that it is not really useful when you are using a lot of UV maps because you can select them. So what we need to do instead is that we need to add UV map node. We will plug the UV to the vector. And here we are going to select the first UV map which is basically driving the fabric material. And now let's do the same for the logo. So let's add the UV map node. But this time, let's, let's connect Let's connect the UV to the vector, but this time we're gonna use the second UV map that we created specifically for the logo. Before I continue with the video, I would like to introduce you to my latest project called Shade Guard, which is a pack specifically for Blender that contains over 80 materials that are fully procedural. This means that each material is fully customizable, so we can change any property and create infinite variations of the same material. Moreover, you don't have to deal with texture tiling, since these materials are not limited with canvas and they are infinitely large. Besides common materials, there are also animated effects that you can use as well. All the complex node systems are collapsed into the single node groups for simplicity and better user experience. I also added tags to each material to make searching easier for you. Now, there are also new materials on the way, but the price will increase as well with every update. So if you get this pack now, you will get it for cheaper, and if you use the code Graffinity, you will get additional discount, which make this deal even sweeter. So if you are interested, it's the first link in the description, so check it out. And now let's go back to the video. So let's go to the edit mode, and now we can select the area where we want the logo to be located. And because I want the logo to be on the chest, I'm gonna select this chest area which is roughly in the center. And once you have the area selected, you will press U on the keyboard and you will unwrap the area. I'm gonna use the angle based method for this, which is basically the most simple one. Now let's go to UV editor and here you can see the area that we unwrapped. And if we preview the logo, you can see that only the part of the logo is visible. To align the logo properly, we need to manipulate with this UV map. So let's rotate it, let's get it up and let's move it roughly into the center. And because it's upside down, we're gonna rotate it by 180 degrees. And now we have the logo in the center. However, you probably noticed that even though we clipped the repetition, the logo is still appearing on the multiple areas. And the reason behind this is that if we invert the selection by using Ctrl-I, 
you can see that the logo is here but if we zoom out you can see that this inverted area is still partly covering the logo here so to fix this we can select everything and we can basically move the uv map out of the logo also, if you don't want to manually select this center area all the time, what you can do instead is go to the object data properties and you can create a new vertex group, give it a proper name, and now we will assign the selection to the vertex group. So if I accidentally click off and I deselect the area, you can always come to the vertex group, you can select the logo and you will press select, it will automatically select the area with the logo. And now we need to basically combine this logo with the fabric material. And we can do this by using the mix color node. So let's add a mix, color node, and now we can either use the color output or the alpha channel and connect it to the factor. Then let's take the base color of the fabric material and let's connect it to the A socket. And now if you take the result and you connect it to the base color of the principal BSDF shader, you can see that now we have the logo combined with the fabric material. As you can see the area is white where the logo is, but we are still using the normal map and roughness of the fabric material. Now we can make the logo brighter, you can basically change it to any color you want, and you can also play with the different blending modes, where each option will blend the logo with the fabric material a little bit differently. I generally like to use the overlay blending mode, because it very well blends the logo with the fabric. And now let's say I want to apply a different material for the logo. A different fabric material, let's say. In that case, we're going to use the alpha channel of the logo as a mix factor between two materials. So first let's add the second material. So I'm going to duplicate the principal PSDF. I'm going to move it slightly further. And if you have a node wrangler enabled, you can just use the ctrl shift combination. You can locate the textures. You can just select all the textures and you can apply them automatically. I'm going to delete the displacement because we don't need it. And let's also get rid of the ambient occlusion. So now we basically have two fabric materials that we want to combine together. We have the first one, which is the one with the logo. And we have a second fabric material that I just added. And to combine them together, we are going to use a mix shader node. So let's add a mix shader node. Now let's connect the first shader and also the second shader. Now we basically combined both materials together, but because the mix factor right now is set up to 0.5, the visibility of both materials is basically 50-50. So if I set the factor to 1, it will basically show only the first material. And if I set it to 0, it will basically show the second material that we just added. So now let's take the logo and we'll use it as a factor between these two shaders. And you can see it's working, but since we want the materials to be in the opposite direction, we can either switch the shaders, or we can add invert node. And we can plug it before it reaches the factor. And this is basically the final result. Now we have your custom logo with two materials, that you can change anytime you want, or move to the different area. That's all for this video, I hope you took some value. And if you did, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And also check out my ShadeGuard library, which is a collection of procedural materials made in Blender that you can fully customize, animate and create infinite variations. So if you are interested, is the first link in the description. That's all from me, check out my other videos, and I'm gonna see you in the next video. See ya.